So yeah, like I was saying, so I'm teaching, I'm currently teaching a unit on housing issues. One of the topics that we will touch upon is gentrification in urban areas and the displacement of people when affluent, typically white people move into established neighborhoods. And people on Twitter actually recommended this game to me. They mentioned how it is a metaphor for gentrification, so I looked into it. And I played the first half last week, and we're gonna, we're, we'll finish the game up today. And yeah, it's pretty much, I don't want to say like on the nose, but like the creator very intentionally made this game with gentrification in mind. Um, and you'll see as we progress through it. So let's go ahead and continue. Basically, we play as a whole and just kind of eat up things as the, and the hole just gets bigger and bigger. Um, it's kind of like Katamari if you ever played those games. There was a game I thought of that I wanted to talk to you about making curriculum for and I've completely forgotten it. Well, the second you remember, be sure to let me know because I love helping people do this stuff. Oh, so th this level we're gonna learn about a chef. Nobody asked about me. Did BK own you with the catapult too? And we play as this little raccoon here. Raid D restaurants. How can you be called salt and pepper and not have an appreciation for soup? I was dealing with a slight bug problem. That's probably why he was rated D. I was exhausted from rounding up bugs, so I ordered a donut. Alright, so basically, I am the raccoon, and we deliver donuts, quote unquote. And they're not really donuts, we're actually just sending this hole to their property that is going to eat up and displace them. Alright, so I am this hole in the ground, and now I'm just going to start eating stuff up. And eventually, right, I'm going to get bigger and bigger until I uh, displace our little chef here, and they're going to lose their restaurants. You can notice the hole is getting a little bit bigger. Get some water in the hole. We can probably get some roaches now. Oh yeah. Yep, and got him. Historian, how's your uh, PhD, PhD program been going? Oh, we got a little bit of a puzzle here. Okay. Oh, so I'm now filled with soup. Can I get some salt? I'm not in one, sadly. I'm doing another mat. Right. I'm mistaking your masters for a PhD. I think I need to feed this bird some good soup. Oh, I get it. Okay. So I got the soup. And now I need salt and pepper without any roaches. Nope. Stay away. Stay away. Stay away. Oh, I didn't get the salt. No roaches. No roaches. Okay, I got the pepper. Uh, uh. Got the salt. Did I do it? Yes, I did it. No, I did not want the bird to eat the roach. I was trying to stay away from the roaches. See, now I'm displacing this restaurant. I'm clearly going to put this restaurant out of, out of business. But they got a lot of cockroaches, so I don't feel too bad about this one. I did put a different restaurant, a little diner, out of business. Um, and I felt bad about that with this one. But the, this, this, the soup kitchen can go.
Ooh. Can I take the whole building now? Big yikes, yeah. Oh, we got a dumpster. Okay, I probably gotta get these buildings somehow. Oh. There we go. There we go, and now we get the whole thing. Oh, we're still going. Alright, so basically, I'm eating up the entire neighborhood. And this obviously wouldn't be the only text that we would use for a lesson on gentrification. Um, they would, we would have already read a number of articles and nonfiction texts about it beforehand. Hey, Potter, how's it going? Rank up, you unlocked the quadricopter. Report to Raccoon Headquarters for training. I don't think I need to. Do I need to look at the Trashpedia? Eh, just a bunch of stuff. We good. Potter, I finally got myself a real headset. I'm starting to feel like an actual streamer instead of just a makeshift one. <laughs> Food poisoning from the cat soup. Yeah, that's... That one deserved to go out of business. Everything I do seems to have helped people. Alright, so now that's actually an interesting co conversation, because, it, right, if they're, if we're gonna have a debate about gentrification, what people could argue that there are some positives to it. So I know while this, this raccoon here is being snarky, um, I could see students advocating that it does bring in nicer restaurants to an extent. I mean, hell, if you go to like uh, Williamsburg and Brooklyn or Astoria and Queens, those neighborhoods are gentrified to hell, but like, I can't say I don't love visiting there, obviously, but we'd need to acknowledge the shadiness that has come with all of that. Let's get back to the real problem. Don't mind me, I just have a dog chilling between my legs. I think he wants some attention. Oh, I am... This is interesting. Check this out. So now the raccoon can talk with this little drone. It took 12 deliveries, so it took 12 neighborhoods of taking over in order to afford this drone. Got it by destroying our friends' homes. All right. So yeah. So a lot of thinking about like businesses that move into neighborhoods. They're making money. They're more well off than before. But they did could they did ruin people's homes in that neighborhood. To Bonky Kong. Teaching you a lesson. Oh, so now we're going to displace the raccoon. Take his quadricopter. Take his nice little plot of land.
that will take their whole donut shop. Oop, down they all go. Ooh, physics is fun. Nine hundred ninety-nine feet below Donut County, where everyone who has been displaced is living. There is no other way to get through to you. You don't know what it's like to lose something you care about. So this is like a teachable moment for the raccoon. You guys love your weird trash houses, and I took them away by doing my job. Mm. I'm sorry if I give you the impression that I know stuff, but I know basically nothing. We can use the hot- so, alright, so we basically got everything down there, and now we're gonna help get everyone back on their feet. Yeah, his name is BK. <laughs> Please locate GPS center for hot air balloon containing a pup. He's weird, but you have to admit possum is right. I also like games that include all dialogue um, as text, because it gives me the opportunity to force my students to read out loud to the class. Although, since I'm teaching remotely, if I do play this game with them, it's going to have to be um, streamed online like this. So not everyone will have the chance to read out loud. Possum is creepy looking. <laughs> so now we're going to displace Possum, who lives in an abandoned house, so Possum's clearly homeless. I probably shouldn't have taken that candle. Yeah, I'll just take the candles, why not? Ooh. Oh, now I got a flashlight in my head, so now... See, I like these little puzzle aspects of the game also. Oh, Jesus. Oops, something's blocking my light. Bunch of weird stuff in this house. Come on, get in the hole. Get in the hole. There we go. Come on. Come on. No? I'll take that. Take that. There's Possum acting weird. Come on. Come on, I know you can get fit. There we go. I see you up there, Possum. Oh, it's just a cat. Oh, Possum's sleeping. Okay. And we got possum. And now we will take possum's abandoned house, which was not apparently abandoned.
Hollow Earth, Occam's Razor. Oh, possums and some conspiracy theories. I may be able to find out. This sheep probably has one. Raccoon Lagoon is the happiest raccoon place on Raccoon Earth. Oh, so now we get to displace the raccoons. This is fun. Oh, they got a little amusement park. I love games that use the player as a character like this. Oh, there's a little pulley. You can have a whole conversation about the concept of complicity. That's totally true. I actually wasn't thinking about that. I feel like if I have this conversation with my students, then I'm actually, I'll am i have to talk about like how my, I myself am probably complicit to an, to an extent. Oh, this is interesting. Okay. Oh, so it's a wheel. Oh, okay. Now we got water. And now we get the wheel moving. So let's do it again. Hmm. I guess they needed more water. There we go. Okay, cool. Oh, now we're take. Oh, we're just gonna eat him. Lol, the camera. <laughs> It's a valuable discussion to have because all of us are in one way or another. Yeah, totally. Thank you, thank you. Oh. This go really well with analysis of the privilege, 100%. You're giving me great ideas, historian. Because I, I haven't created any curriculum for this yet, since I have not finished this game myself. I guess I do. Yeah. Hmm. Anything over here? There is no ethical consumerism under capitalism. 
you know, <laughs> I know we're supposed to keep, like, Paul quote-unquote, keep politics out of the classroom, but I feel like I'm slowly making my uh, students more socialist. <laughs> Those raccoons all just died, by the way. Look, if they start to ask uncomfortable questions because they have learned new information. Oh yeah, totally. No, it's they come to these conclusions by themselves. I'm just there, you know, to help guide them <laughs> in their own thought process. So the police chief is a raccoon. This is, this is opening up an entire new conversation. So raccoons are the ones who are coming in and displacing the current residents, but and now the police officer is also a raccoon. Um, obviously, or the police chief is a raccoon, so there's obviously some more connections to be made. The Trash King. Historian, we should collaborate on this uh, curriculum. I th my I my goal is to use this game in like three weeks from now. Um, I know our students are different ages, but I'd totally be down to talk about this. Day three protesters. They have custom T-shirts now. <laughs> Donut County Donut Shop is missing. Investigation underway. Oh no, I was wrong. The police chief is not a uh, raccoon. I thought he was like, at a quick glance. He looks like a rat. <laughs> Which is also funny. Hot air balloon causing traffic jam. That must be my pup. I'll visit you in jail. Speaking of unethical consumption. Um, you missed what I said. What did I say? Uh, I think I said, um, the I made a mistake. The police chief is not a raccoon. He's actually a rat. At quick glance, he looked like another raccoon. Are we just about to eat up all these cars? That's funny. Get some litter, get a rock. Take this little, little mouse guy. No? Do you think you will uh, teach history or teach high school one day, historian? There we go. These raccoons just setting up shop in the middle of the road. Probably my goal is to be a curriculum director and work with history teachers on curriculum assessment. That's dope. At one point I was looking at a uh, PhD programs in curriculum development, um, because I think I'd be pretty good at it, but I don't know if I want to go through the whole hassle of getting a PhD. Oh, donuts! Actual donuts, not just our fake donut that people get stuck in. Talk to Cleopi, you might like the program she's in. Will do.
I'm trading their cameras for donuts. And now I'm just kidnapping them. There we go. Oh, I don't get to take the cars. I gotta stop this guy. Probably have to time this right. There we go. Oh no. There we go. That's an albino raccoon. Maybe? Take them all down. Yeah, it kind of looked like it. Oh, and now I get, now I get the cars. That, all these port. So the creator of the game is basing this off of LA, so this traffic makes sense. Oh damn, we started fires. I think this game is made by one person, if I recall correctly. There's an interview he gave about talking about this game and why he wanted it to mean something that I will have my students read. I think The Verge wrote the article, although there's a number of articles. I saw one in the Washington Post also about this. I'm going up to save us. The Raccoon Savior. Back into the mainframe. We're going to talk to the leader of the raccoons, Trash King. We're going to do a boss fight and kick his butt. So, in real life, this would be... Gee, I wonder which leader of white people in the United States currently could be labeled as the Trash King. I say this with full awareness that I am a very white, white person myself. <laughs> it's like we got replaced by raccoons. Do you think this is all my fault? I feel bad, but I can't undo what I did. You can help rectify it. You're feeling guilty, I don't blame you for everything that raccoons did do. That's that white guilt. Don't make your guilt my problem. Ah, see? That's an important lesson considering how often I see on Twitter um, people of color mentioning how white people often rely too much on them uh, with learning all of this instead of just taking on the responsibility themselves. Kinda looks like a big garbage can. That's the observatory in, in LA, right?
Reverse air fresheners. You should call Trash King now and try to convince him to help us fix everything. Are you kidding? I can't call him. I would be it would be extremely awkward. Text him then. Hey. Do I just send a little quack? People calling out their own people on their privilege. Who is this? It's got a little cr little crown. He doesn't respond to the quacks. To undo some of the holes. Can we put things back the way they were? Ooh, that's that's upsetting. They were typing, the raccoon was typing, and now there's nothing. No problem. I think he's mad. Opening a hole and wrecking this place. Got a little construction worker breaking a window, it looks like. <laughs> Nothing else we can do, well, giving up early. The idea of labeling stuff trash in order to justify taking it over later. Yep. I can help you hack into the... Oh wait, maybe the police chief was a raccoon. I thought this this dude was, but that's po that's possible was living in the abandoned house. Just plug this into the security system. That was a good catch on my end. I'm thinking of all the movies that vilified New York City in the 80s, 90s, yeah. There we go. Well, this is... That was a fun little animation. Oh, now we're gonna... Displace them within their own... Safety zone. This little raccoon using a very human toilet. Oh! I didn't know that was gonna happen. Look at the donuts in the tube. This is this is fun. Going to security. We got a sleeping raccoon. Sleeping on the job. Currently multitasking, helping my girlfriend play Breath of the Wild. She's never played a Zelda game before. This is a bit of a dive in the deep end. I have actually, there's actually, Potter, there was a video I watched on YouTube recently about how Breath of the Wild is actually like the perfect uh, Zelda game to start people off in. Um, because. It's like, it's very intuitive once you start playing. There's not much to follow, there's not much lore you need to know, you just kind of dive right in. Okay, so now I got a catapult. Go back here. Oh yeah, now we can open some doors. Ah, that's the red one. To the biology lab. Many rude screaming beasts. Oh, this is. We're now we're diving into overt racism territory. It's our job to figure out the purpose of these nude creatures. 
extract the facts. They got a little snake. Thank you. Thank you. is free. Now I'm eating things again as the hole. Got a bunch of raccoons watching in the window. Oh, so the frog's gonna get some flies. Utilizing game mechanics pr that we previously had in the game. That's good game design. Now, get my belly frog. Hmm. Alright, he's gotta grab that. Something else he can grab first. I'm missing some. Oh, there we go. Get some rabbits, which were in the previous level also. And now the rabbits are going to start having sex and having babies, which is why the hole is getting bigger. From the bunnies. It's a rogue hole. It's very normal. Oh, that's a lot of bunnies. Looks like we're gonna get even more bunnies. Get in the hole, bunny. Thank you. I feel like there is... the risk of some incest happening amongst these bunnies while they're in the hole. Oh, yes, give me the blue card. Give it to me. Thank you. For raccoons, the people of Donut County produced a wide variety of trash. We believe each piece of trash had something had special significance. Our scientists study this trash round the clock so that we can learn. I clicked through that too quickly. Let's see what they're up to. <laughs> they're literally just looking at a trash fire. I guess I'll eat these donuts first. Not yet. Now I can probably get the hard hats. There we go. Now we get the chair. Yeah, now I'm going to take these raccoon scientists. Delicious. Now I'm smoking. This was a previous level also. The game design here is... is solid. I like when games build on previously. Oh, we got rockets also. So we 
got electrical, we got two sprinklers. Where do I want this to? Okay. Do another one over here. No. Hmm. I feel like it's gotta be something with the sprinklers, right? There we go. Everything is fine. <clears throat> I will not go away. Right, going. Oh, this is okay. So I'm going to start it, let it drink. Get my firework. Hmm. Puzzles, 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 puzzles. Drink that. Okay. I think I know what to do. Alright. We're gonna start this up. Let the bird drink it away. Eat the firework. Maybe not? I'm a little stumped. Water starts it. The bird. I don't want the bird to drink it. Okay. I think I know what I'm supposed to do. Okay. I want the firework to float. Oh, did, I, did it work? It almost worked. Are you have any idea? Or Soren, you have any idea how to do this? Oh. I think I just figured out part of it. So where do I want... I guess, do I want the rocket to shoot at the wires? Hmm. 
place the firework. All right. Here. That. Not over there. We're getting closer. You don't need it to float. Where do you think I place it, historian? On this side? Let's see what happens. This is the first time I'm actually stumped. Maybe just leave it where it pops out. I think you need to have your hole empty so it goes straight up into the wires that are disconnected hanging from the ceiling. But it will, if it goes in the hole... Like I should drop it in my- in the hole? Oh, oh. Uh. Potter, you're a genius. Go see the Trash King. Thank you for the donut, although I feel like I'm being lured into a trap. It's going to be a pile of trash. <laughs> a gate around the hole. BK, please report to my office right now. I am opening up direct access for you alone. This is my mess to clean up. So it also looks like, so the raccoon living on the pile of trash, right? And they've been calling all the people that have been displ displacing trash. So it, like, I think it's a metaphor that the raccoon is living off of other people's trash. employee status. The company will take care of everything for you with the leave and wipe your butt. Ooh, 
That's a nice quadcopter. Oh, look at this bribery. It's like the whole people who flip burgers don't deserve $15 an hour. The corporations who make money off flippers deserve a billion, their billions of profits. Yep. It's an asinine point anyway, because we need people to have those jobs, and it's unreasonable to expect that someone can't survive off a minimum wage job. Right? Minimum wage is supposed to be meant like the minimum amount of money necessary to survive in whatever area, and that's just like blatantly impossible these days. Because I think realistically, if minimum wage actually increased with inflation, it should be around 22 to 25 right now. Not 15. <clears throat> you gotta reach in and take the pickle. It's meant to inspire you. Don't be swayed, raccoon. Oh, it's the king cop there. Trash King has my hacking device. We're gonna use a hole. <laughs> it has a health bar. <laughs> Now wait, do I want them to shoot in the hole? I definitely want that. This is so silly, I love it. The game's about gentrification, but you need some lightheartedness. Nope, nope, stay away from the hole, stay away from the hole. Oh, he's firing cement to fill up the hole. Makes sense. Come on. BK's a true capitalist. Oh, I love it so much. Uh, just unpack that one statement about what that means. holes against me. I'm the trash king. I rule. I designed this app. Sorry to burst your balloon, but your friend BK took the pickle. <laughs> like BK's gonna help us in the end. I didn't take the pickle. Didn't drink the Kool-Aid.
Was there another bomb? Will the hacking end? Under the image of the copter. Oh! Good looks, good looks, historian. <laughs> That was just unlucky placement. Oh, we got a little whirlwind going. I like destroying things. Unlock the achievement boss fight. Raccoons just can't cut it in Dono County. You ruined the neighborhood. Think about all the innocent raccoons that moved here. Yup. All those innocent white people that moved here. We first came to Dono County because the trash was plentiful. Now we have to keep opening up more holes to get less and less trash. I was looking out for us, dude. No, you weren't. You're looking out for yourself. You ran out of people to steal from. I'd have to build a huge catapult. We'll tell you how to get your hand out of the pickle jar. Manifest us in the year. This, this, this game is a gem. I'm really happy that uh, people recommended it for me to play. BK, stay out of trouble. Stop being so white. <laughs> Don't cattle any snakes. Not you though, BK. But I get to be your boss. Sure, <laughs> why not? It's surprisingly deep. It is. A lot. A, clearly, a lot of thought went into making this game. It's not just like a little, it's not just a small gimmick. I sure hope you don't mention anything to the cops about my explosive business. Oh, blackmail is always fun. Hear about the one about the raccoon kissing the chicken. I'm not gonna kiss your dirty chicken. A real waste of time. I always like when these smaller indie games have witty jokes. Stop by cat soup sometime, will ya? Eh, I don't know. They're kind of a secret ingredient. The cockroaches are in the people's food. The meat pies are people. It's a Sweeney Todd reference. Oh, 
I'll never trust them again. It's gonna take a long time for me to figure if you guys, you messed up like every possible thing. For showing me how to be good. For your patience. That's enough praise. Someday you'll make it up to me. After you my laundry for 100 years. After spending so much time with you, I decided you stink only 75% as much as the Trash King. Still need a bath though. Oh, and now we got some fun interactive credits. Up, down. These are pretty cool credits. So yeah, so I'm planning on... I don't know if I'll actually be able to find my like standard class time to play the game, but I want... <clears throat> I'm gonna offer it as like an extra credit thing where if students meet with me after school hours one day, we'll... <coughs> Ooh, got tickled in my throat. We'll play through the game um, over the course of like a day or so and have them analyze it and compare it to or connect to the text that we read, that we actually read it in class. Ooh, that was an that was an achievement. So thanks for coming out, Potter and Historian. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Uh, thank you for anyone else who might have stopped by. Um, when I do end up making the curriculum, I'll be sure to post it on Twitter. It will also be on my website. I'll write up an entire blog post about it. Remember that anything I have on my website at Hey Listen Games is completely free, so be sure to keep a lookout for it. And I'll be here next week, again, Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, but I haven't decided the game I'm going to play yet. I'm still thinking on that one. And Historian, we're definitely going to talk about this. We'll, we're going to collaborate on this one. I'll, when I do make the document for it, I'm going to share you on it. So I'll, I'll hit you up for your email. Done with flying. Power down. And watch the rest of the credits. Created by Ben Esposito. Not made by just one person, so I was wrong about that. Fun game. I, I love the games so much. They're always so unique. Don't get me wrong, I, I love my big uh, AAA games, but something about these indie games are just a nice experience. Like, this game, two hours, perfect length for um, a game to play with in school. Have a great week y'all, Potter and Historian, and I'll see you in the Discord, I'll see you on Twitter, I'll see you next week.